Imagine, instead of seeing the sky above you, there was another ground, and the sky was only visible in a ring around the horizon. The sun would appear in two spots every hour and 15 minutes. You would be on a Roche world, a pair of planets orbiting so closely together that their atmospheres touch. I know of at least three planet pairs like this in books, and there are probably more. But is something possible like this in real life? And if so, what would it be like? Let's peer into the vortex and find out. What happens when two planets get so close their atmospheres touch? Would it be stable? Could it have life? And most importantly, could a bird or plane fly from one planet to the other? The first thing we need to address is that atmospheres are really, really thin, like the membrane of an egg thin. Not the shell, that plastic-like substance between the shell and the white. If two planets got so close together that their atmospheres overlapped, you would not be able to tell unless you were between them that they weren't touching. And here's the problem. When two gravitational bodies get that close together, they tend to shatter. This is due to tidal forces. Now we know tides from the moon and the sun based on the difference in gravity these objects exert from one side of the Earth to the other. The closer the planets, the stronger the tides. There is a distance for each planet at which the other planet will break apart, the Roche limit. If one body is much smaller than the other, then it will disintegrate when it passes into the other body's Roche limit, possibly becoming a planetary ring. If the two bodies are equal in size and they come at each other and they pass within each other's Roche limits, then there will be vast amounts of destruction and probably total sterilization except perhaps for the hardiest of extremophiles. And of course, if the two planets are on a vector of approach that's even a little bit too close, then they'll... But that's just the case of two planets coming at each other for a close pass. What if they're on a tight circular orbit that keeps a constant distance that doesn't vary in the strength of the tides? Well, as a matter of fact, this can be stable sort of, for a certain amount of time. Let's consider two planets in a tight circular orbit getting gradually closer to each other over a period of millions or billions of years. The closer they get, the stronger the tides. But because it takes so long, it won't have that catastrophic destruction effect. The first major phenomenon we'll see will be tidal locking. Because of the irregularities in the mass density, the same faces of each planet will always face each other. This is like how when a balloon floats, the tie always points downward. When the tidal forces get strong enough, the planets will start to deform. First, they'll get ellipsoidal, and then they'll become egg-shaped. When they are close enough, the Coriolis effect comes into play. The same principle that makes you spin faster when your arms are closer to you than when your arms are further out. This is because of conservation of angular momentum. When the bulges on the planets get close enough together, it will be as if there's a force on them, tugging at them to spin faster. And speaking of tidal forces, the tides would be insane. Most of the planet's oceans would be on the inner surfaces. There would also be oceans on the outer surfaces because of far side high tide. If you're writing this in a science fiction story and you want there to be land on the near sides, then you can have these planets be very dry so that only the sides that are facing each other have enough water to support life. When the planets get close enough together, their atmospheres will indeed overlap. When that happens, birds and planes will indeed be able to fly from one planet to another. As for what the weather will be like in those places, I couldn't begin to guess. Next, the inner oceans would touch, and fish would be able to swim between worlds. You might even be able to take a boat across, though I'm not sure how gravity and the surface of the water would work in those places. And then, as the friction of the atmospheres and the tidal forces and the oceans continue to drag the planets closer, their crusts will crush together. And the catastrophic process of these two planets 
becoming one planet begins. There will most likely be earthquakes and massive volcanoes all over the place, but it won't destroy the planets because this process happens over the same time scales as the continents shifting on the Earth's crust. So although these two planets are merging into one and their surfaces are drastically changing shape and their mantles are melting together, it takes place over a long enough time period that the tectonic plates have time to reshape and reform and subduct and all that stuff. And so over hundreds of millions to billions of years, these two planets will merge together into a peanut shaped planet and then continue to fall together and merge until they become one spherical planet with a day night cycle of one to two hours. So there we have it, two planets close enough together their atmospheres touch. They're tidally locked. There's no skimming across each other's surfaces. There's no approaching from far away and slingshotting around each other. Those types of events would destroy the planets. Over a long enough time, they would slowly merge, and it might be possible for life to live on these planets before, during, and after the process. If you're a sci-fi world builder, I hope you get something good out of this. Let me know if you have any interesting ideas in the comments and subscribe for more glimpses into the vortex. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.